I'll never forget the morning of November 5th, 2009. That's when we received the phone call that changed our lives, that our daughter, Emma, was diagnosed with leukemia. I didn't know anything about leukemia. I didn't even know at the time that it was a blood cancer. I just knew that it was a cancer. I didn't know that it was curable at the time. I just knew that my baby girl was diagnosed with it, and I just couldn't even, I couldn't even catch my breath. Everything stops. It's as if your life is frozen and put on hold. And then all of a sudden, your dreams and hopes are crashed, and now you have to worry about what the future is gonna bring, whether you're even gonna have your child in a day, a week, a month, or a year. One of the things that we've been most grateful for is since the beginning of my research, from the time I was a fellow to the time we started to explore the work that we're doing today, the Children's Cancer Foundation uh, was right there for us. Uh, they provided us with critical grant funding at a time when we weren't able to get other funding because we didn't have the evidence that what we were doing actually worked. The research that we do um, uh, actually is on multiple levels, but the main aspect is that we're trying to find ways to create new drugs uh, that target childhood cancer in ways that uh, the drug will affect the cancer, keep the cancer from growing, but not have the same types of side effects that a lot of the current medicines that we're using have. I remember them putting an IV into Emma and them just handing her over to me and I just held her and cried because I did not know the prognosis of leukemia in an infant. Um, luckily, Dr. Wiley was there to answer all of our questions. Um, he calmed us and assured us that we were gonna be okay. We didn't have a refrigerator. Sometimes we didn't have a shower um, or a bathroom even in the room. And Emma was constantly hooked up to a pole so I could never leave her. What the new unit, though, has allowed us to do is it's given us more room and it's given us a better footprint and landscape in which to provide the kind of care that we've been doing for a decade here, or actually for more than uh, several decades. So it was designed from the perspective of a patient-centered unit. And everything that we do here is designed and processed in a workflow of a patient-centered experience. The Children's Cancer Foundation has, I'm so astonished by their generosity and the donations that they've made for the new children's wing at Sinai. It's amazing and I can't even begin to be so grateful for the generosity so that today's families of children that are diagnosed, you know, they won't have to have the same conditions that we had. Thirty years ago, when I entered the field, it, it was very much like what other people thought. We wanted to make a difference. We wanted to advance the field. We wanted to cure cancer in children. And in a sense, we wanted to be a little bit of a hero. After 30 years, what has really convinced me is that we're here to provide that support with the real superheroes, our people like Joanne. We are still losing children to cancer. And until the survivability rate is 100%, we will need our benefactors and supporters so that we can continue the Children's Cancer Foundation's mission to build treatment facilities to treat the children that have cancer for programs that will help make that treatment easier for them and for their families, and very importantly, for the research that will one day result in a cure so that we will never again lose a child to this dreaded disease of cancer. We're not quite sure of long-term effects for Emma. We're keeping a close eye on them as well as Dr. Wiley. Um, but other than that, she's a normal six-year-old in first grade. 
loving school, loving playing with her friends and leading a normal life. She's currently um, a new big sister, which she's so excited about. We always wanted to grow our family, but just didn't feel it was the time. And now we did, and we love every moment of being a family of four and just trying to fit back into normal life, whatever that is. It is Juliana and kids just like her that make us better because I think that no matter what we give them, they give us more. She and her family, to me, demonstrate the reason why we should continue to do this and why it's important that the funding and the support and the desire to continue to do this for children with cancer exists. This is our superhero.
Thank you, Jerry. It is humbling for me to stand with you tonight following the legacy of Shirley Howard, CCF's founder. Shirley's determination, strength, tenacity, and drive motivate, motivate me every day. Thank you to the CCF board for continuing to believe in me. It is my privilege to work alongside such a committed and energetic board of directors. Roseanne and Lauren, thank you for your passion and dedication. But it would be remiss of me if I did not also extend my appreciation to the Lasher and Verrilli families, who work tirelessly behind the scenes supporting our collective efforts. And I extend a personal thanks to my family, who has put up with my long hours and craziness for weeks. My husband Scott might argue that my craziness is no different than usual, but all of our families will get us back very soon. I also want to recognize all of our tremendous volunteers, without whom this evening would truly not be possible. As Jerry mentioned, we are a staff of three, so we evidently rely heavily on our dedicated volunteers. And I would like to give a quick acknowledgement to two volunteers in particular from our board of directors, Terry McGowan and Steve Coombs, who are volunteer all-stars. Thank you so much for all your work. Sponsors, you make research and finding cures for pediatric cancer possible. The dollars we raise here and throughout the year are invested into research programs and facilities that directly impact children facing cancer every day. Earlier, Mark asked survivors and those battling cancer to stand. It is each of you, each family, each child that is or has been in the trenches of cancer treatment, of uncertainty of exhaustion, of inexplicable pain, facing the fear of the unknown. Each of you is my all-star. Your courage provides me with inspiration. That inspiration means I have no hesitation in asking others for support. You give me a purpose and a reason to pick up the phone and ask friends and strangers to consider contributing to CCF. So if you see my caller ID and you haven't heard from me yet, you'll know why I'm calling. But I know you will heed the call because no parent should ever have to hear the words, your child has cancer. Our theme tonight is an all-star evening. In our world, we meet all-stars every day. You met the Oberly family, you can tell they're all-stars. Every patient, every survivor is an all-star. Parents of these warriors are all-stars. To those of you out there who have lost a child to cancer, you too are special all-stars. Those on the front lines of research, you too are all stars. And those of you who work at our, at our partner hospitals, working alongside kids with cancer, you are our MVPs. Without the generous support of our donors, advances in treatments and cures would not be possible. Survivorship would not be possible. Together we are one community. Dancers, artists, firefighters, lawyers, jewelers, sprout growers, network security, leaders, martial art masters, teachers, electrical contractors, coaches, philanthropists, all of our food industry leaders, and yes, our governor. Together, we are a stronger cancer-fighting community. And together, we fight for Andrew, for Noah, for Cade, for Jake, for Eileen, for Ava, for Grace, for Darren, for Madeline, for Cecilia, for Emma, for Peyton, for Amber, for Tyler, for Noah, for Kalani, and so many more. I will never stop fighting for you, for your families. But I also need to recognize the all-stars who did not make it. Cancer is evil, and not all of our heroes are with us. Juliana, John Eric, and far too many other shining lights, we remember you always. Thank you, Tasha. Our deep gratitude to Dr. Jeffrey Choreski, Chairman of both our Scientific Advisory Board and our 2018 Grant Review Panel. Dr. Choreski assembled an independent team of leading oncology researchers from across the country to review this year's grant proposals. Their recommendations enable CCF to identify the leaders in cancer research who will receive this year's grants. Will our 2018 grand awardees please find your way to the stage? 
It is my great honor and privilege on behalf of the Children's Cancer Foundation to present our 2018 awardees. Tonight, the Children's Cancer Foundation will be presenting grants and pledge payments in the amount of $1 million. And these are real checks, by the way, folks, not the ceremonial types. Since, the, since its founding, the Children's Cancer Foundation has awarded grants totaling more than $38.6 million. Present <laughs> Dr. Rubens a grant of $75,000 for his research in atypical, atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumors. Six years ago, CCF and Giant Food created a special grant award to encourage young physician scientists to pursue their passion for saving children's lives. With declining research dollars directed towards pediatric cancers, it has become vitally important to support the next generation of researchers to find the ultimate cure for these diseases. We are grateful that Giant Food recognized this important need and for their generous support. Joining me to present the next award tonight is CCF board member and secretary, Terry McGowan, who serves as the director of quality assurance at Giant Food. I also invite Tammy and John Carver to join me. Tonight we present the second annual grant named in loving memory of Julianne Carver, recognizing research in rhabdomyosarcoma. Together, we will present Dr. Micah Maxwell with the 2018 Giant Food Next Gen Award in the amount of some stuff and I don't really know some people out there but you may have it so if you're having a hard time you can get through it because if I can get through it then you can and you know you can you know I've been through some stuff and I'm not a giver up with so you shouldn't be and I know you can get through this <laughs> 